Hello and welcome to another exciting photography adventure with me, Mr. Solomon. In this video I'm going to show you how I prepare the materials needed for the cyan type photographic process. There are lots of different things that we are going to need and use. We have two separate chemicals that we are using today. Ammonium ferric citrate and potassium ferrous cyanide. This one sounds a bit scary, but it's not scary. In fact, both of these are a type of iron compound. And in this process, the images that we produce will be blue in colour. This is very different to other types of photography that you might think of, such as black and white and colour. The paper we're going to use is normal drawing paper you would see in any art lesson. And I'm going to apply it with this sponge brush. Once the solution has dried on the paper, it will become sensitive to light. Fortunately, the solution will only react when exposed to UV light, such as from the sun. However, to help make it really clear that this process, that this paper is light sensitive, I will switch on a red safety light at some point. I think that's a really good visual way to help you remember and understand that the solution that we mix is light sensitive once it's applied to this paper and dries. The paper will then be put in envelopes ready for you to use and collect. I will of course be wearing gloves and making sure the chemical doesn't come into contact with my skin or eyes. Once the chemical has dried on the paper, it will be completely harmless. Both these solutions can now be safely stored until they're ready to be mixed together. Once mixed together, they become sensitive to light. Now that our two solutions are fully mixed, we can combine them together to create the chemical used in the cyanotype process. Normally, I would do this in school in our darkroom. As I can't do this, instead, I'm home. I've shut the door and pulled down the blinds to reduce the amount of UV light entering the room. Although I don't have to do this, remember I said I wanted to help you understand just how sensitive to light this paper can become. So I'm going to use my red light, which is this. The reason we use a red light when working with chemicals in photography is that the red light travels much slower and therefore affects things like the chemicals or paper that we use at a much slower rate. For that reason, we normally call the red light a safe light. Our mixture is now ready to be applied to the paper. By using a sponge brush, I can do this quickly. Mr. Solomon, welcome to his class. Today you're going to learn some photography, not economic geography. Take a seat. Make sure your work is not incomplete. Before you go in class, make sure your shoes are neat, just like Mr. Solomon's feet. <laughs> 